this is still 12.3. This is the last three problems, the, the bingo problems. Um, this one's wanting us to find the odds in favor of having the letters I, O, or G. I, O, or G. So, um, I, there's 26 to 50, 51, 75, 70, these all have 25 in them. So, I, O, G. Alright, there's 25, 25, 25. So, odds in favor. Remember, this is the number of ways that uh, one of these balls that come out will have um, I or G. So, there's 25, 25, 25, 75 things that will happen, or 75 ways that it can happen. Right, and then, uh, odds in favor, it can happen, it can't happen. Can, can't, can, can't. Remember, for odds in favor, it leads off with it does happen. So there's 75 things that would make it happen. All the I's, all the G's, all the O's. And then how many things won't make it happen? Well, that would just be the B's and the N's. So there's 25 here, 25 more here, so that's 50. All right, simplify your answer. So what does 75 and 50 have in common? They have 25 in common. So that ends up being 3 to 2. All right, now notice the simplified version of this. Because B, I, N, G, and O all have 25 in them. They all have the same amount in them. What this basically boils down to is I, O, G, there's three. I, O, and G. And then there's two, the B's and the N's that don't satisfy this. So three to two. All right. So that's where that's coming from, that simplified version. Now you can only do that if they have all the same amount in them. And these do. All right, uh, 14, still the bingo problems. Uh, the odds against it being B11. Well, B11 is one of the things in here. So there are 125 balls in here. So remember, odds against, we lead off with it's not a B11. How many ways is there for it to not be B11? Well, there's 125 balls. There's one B11. There's 124 that are not B11. And then there's just the one that is a B11. Alright, so remember, number of ways that it can't happen leads off for odds against. The number of ways it can is the second thing for odds against. Alright, odds in favor leads off with can, and the second number is can't, but odds against is the other way around. Alright, uh, suppose the probability of selling a car today is 0.34. Find the odds against selling a car today. Alright, this is where we're going to have to use this version. Alright, um, the odds against is they're always easier to compute if we have the number of ways we don't have to worry about decimals we don't have to worry about fractions but they don't give us a way to compute that here so we have to use this version of it all right so the probability that we do sell a car is 0.34 the odds against selling a car are going to be 0.34 down here on the bottom that's the probability that it does happen that we do sell a car and this will be the probability we don't sell the car. Okay, remember, this thing is always equal to 1 minus this. Right? Complements add up to 1. So um, 1 minus the probability we do sell a car is the probability we don't sell a car. All right, so uh, I can use, you know, you don't have to use a calculator. You can do a lot of these in your head. But if I wanted to compute the probability that I do sell a car, or don't sell a car from the probability I do, I just subtract that from one. Right? So this is the probability that I uh, don't sell a car. So that's 0 0.662, 0 0.34, and remember, we simplify our answer. We want a ratio of the colon. 0 0.66, 0 0.34, when we write a ratio, ratios don't have decimals in them. So the very first thing we're going to do is change these decimals to whole numbers by moving that decimal point two places in it, in both. So instead of 0 0.66, 0 0.34, we're going to start off 66 and 34. Okay, but then notice that these things have numbers in common. Right, uh, both of them are even. So 66 divided by two is 33. 34 divided by two is 17. So we're going to have 33. 17 odds against. Alright, they don't have anything in common, so that's our simplified answer. So remember, no 
decimal points whenever you're doing this. Now, if you have a TI calculator, you could have put in 0.66 divided by the 0.34, like we started off with. Hit the enter button, right, and then press the math back into a fraction, and it'll uh, basically give you that ratio in whole number form, simplified form there. Right. The only thing is your your calculator will give it to you as a fraction. You just have to replace that division bar with that colon. Right. But that end of fraction feature, which is under the math button, right, that'll simplify any fraction or any ratio that you give the calculator, even if you give it in decimal form like we did in this problem.